Hey, what's up guys? CJ here with another episode of A Real Quick Tip. Today is actually my first day on YouTube. I'm transitioning from IGTV over here to YouTube. I got some new gear to make higher quality videos for you guys. So if you're here, thanks for watching. Today we're going to head over into Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to show you a simple technique that I use to create depth within one color of lettering. With this technique, you're going to be able to take something that looks like this over to something that looks like this. I don't really know what to call this effect, we're just going to do it today. Uh, it's something that I do just to add those minor details that kind of finish off your piece. So let's jump right into Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to show you how it works. Alright, so now that we're in Adobe Illustrator, I already have my artwork laid out. Um, I built this thing in a Affinity on the iPad and I built it in different shapes. So one thing I recommend while you build things in Adobe Illustrator or Affinity or whatever vector program you're doing, I recommend that you build them in different shapes so that you can do some nice detail like this. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select all this. We're going to Command C for copy. If you don't know where that's at, that's edit copy. Let's open up our layers panel and then we are going to create a new layer and we are gonna command shift V, that's gonna paste it in place. If you don't know where that's at, that's edit, paste in place. Remember these quick keys, okay? When you're doing, doing things on these programs, remember the quick keys, it's gonna help speed up your workflow. And um, as I'm mentioning things, I'm, I'm going to use my quick keys. So if you don't know where it's at, drop a comment below and let me know and I'll, I'll help you out. All right, but paste in place on this new layer all right and now let's lock the bottom layer and this top layer is where we're gonna build our shapes that are gonna create these um, shadow effects this depth for us all right so when I'm looking at these kind of things the first thing that I do is I kind of envision how I want these uh, layers and these uh, shapes to have shadows on each other so the first thing that I see is this B um, this B, I want it to kind of come up and swoop in front of my other strokes. All right, so let's select this B, the top stroke, and then we are going to Command C for copy, and then Command B to paste it in back. One thing I forgot to mention is um, let's backspace a couple. All right. So when you're working on something, what I usually do is I just come over here, object, arrange, and I bring it to the front so I can see what I'm doing. It may not be the most front object on this whole layout, but for the sake of what I'm doing now, it's gonna work for me. So I brought it to the front. I'm gonna command copy, and then I'm gonna command B. That's gonna paste it in the back. That's edit, paste in back. With it still selected, I'm gonna hit I. I'm gonna eye drop it. Eyedropper tool is right here, and I'm going to eye drop the background. But I recommend using whatever color background you have, uh, just so you can see things right now. Eventually, it's going to all be one color, but for what we're doing now, um, let's use our background. And then with it still selected, we're going to tap R, that's our rotate tool, and then hold down Alt and tap on this anchor right here. Now it's going to let us preview this thing. It's probably going to be turned off, but I'm going to tap it on and then I'm going to um, mess around with the different degree of how I want this thing to work. So keep in mind, note what degree you're working with because it's going to help you as you create the rest of this stuff. It's going to help you uh, have a consistent look with all these shadows that we're going to make. All right, so I think about five degrees works nice. I am going to hit OK. And then what I usually do is I get rid of the stuff that I don't need right now. So Shift E, um, that'll be our eraser tool. And I'm going to erase the top half of that because I don't need that. I'm just looking at this little piece right here that is going to uh, swoop over both of these other strokes. So now with our top layer selected, and this little piece that we have made right now. Select both, come over to your Pathfinder, and then just minus the front. Now we're just left with this cool little shape that is gonna create that shadow for us. See it better? Let me change it up real quick, just to a bright red. 
and that's our little shape that we got but when you set it to the background color it's going to look like that shadow once again don't know why we got a stroke take it away all right so let me try that again for you and then after that i'm going to speed this thing up and i'm going to finish this and then we'll come back to it all right so let's say hmm this downstroke i kind of want this piece to go in front of the downstroke as well so what we're gonna do is we're gonna command shift let me get it for you um edit you know object arrange bring to the front see this is command shift whatever that bracket is right there so bring this thing to the front it's gonna get rid of our shadow there but don't worry about that we're just doing this so we can see what's going on now with it selected command copy command b bring it to the back hit your eyedropper I drop your background and then get rid of the stroke I should just get rid of the stroke on that thing anyways but we're gonna work with it right now so I drop it boom tap R it's gonna bring up your rotate tool and then we are going to hold down alt and tap somewhere around here this is gonna kind of be up to your exploration let's click right here um and usually shadows kind of go on the underside that looks cool yes it does but uh, we're gonna drop it to the underside so uh, remember I told you to remember your degree we were on negative 5 for the other I'm gonna do positive 5 for it this time okay shift E is gonna bring up our eraser tool and then I'm gonna erase what I do not need just tap a line right through there that way we can delete this top side now I have this cool shadow here we are going to select the shadow and its top layer, the stroke, and then head back over to Pathfinder, minus front, and then we got kind of this weird little piece over here. So if you double tap in, you can delete it, and now you see we're left with this shape right here. When you get out of that, we got cool little shadow effect right there. So like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this thing up and then I'm going to come back and explain some things for you guys. So let me get into it and I'll see you soon. All right, guys, so we're back and I finished up the shadows on this piece here. Um, I'm pretty happy with it and now we're gonna take it to the uh, finalized stage so what we're gonna do here is we are we're still on our shadow layer um, I have everything selected so command a that's gonna select everything on that layer and we're gonna make it a compound path so command 8 that makes it a compound path what that is is under object compound path make what it does is it basically um, makes everything that you've selected one shape so even though uh, some of these pieces in here aren't touching it's now one shape and it's going to enable us to take it to the next level we come back over to our layers panel let's uh, tap our layer one which is our type layer um, the one that has all the the shapes built out I'm gonna drag it down to the plus icon down here that's gonna duplicate that layer for me let's unlock it you always want to duplicate um, your original layer because it's going to save all those shapes and all those elements that we originally built this with all right so we lock it let's hide it we don't need it so let's select the type layer before we do that let's lock this back layer command to lock all right so actually let's come over here to our shadow layer first now I'm gonna make it something bright just to make sure that I got everything that I need and it's gonna it's gonna make it a little bit easier to select some of these things when they're different colors all right so it's red um, we don't have any stray pieces anywhere we've already selected we've already made it a compound path so now let's copy it command C let's lock the layer now let's hide it we don't need it anymore because we're bringing it over to our duplicated type layer command shift V it's gonna paste it in place edit paste in place alright so now that it's on top let's select a piece of type 
and then go select same fill color it's going to select everything that's white on this layer for us and the only thing that's white is the type and now we are going to merge this type all right so let me hide the shadows for us real quick so we can see what's going on command y when we merged it now it's just one shape okay um we lost our details uh some of these letters in here they get kind of funky hard to read well that's what we're going to take care of right now so command y get back out of that thing and then command shift three um it's going to show us everything on that layer for some reason i still have my sketch let's delete that all right so select our type let's make our type a compound path command eight once again object compound path make so now we have two shapes basically in our system we have two shapes let's select both shapes and then minus front boom down here you can see it's one color it's showing us everything on this thing is white all right so we can change this color if we want to whatever we want to do it's one color now and like I mentioned before this works really well when you have a darker background okay let's unlock the background so I can show you what I mean if we come over here let's make it white I mean it still looks cool don't get me wrong it still does but for whatever reason in my opinion it works better with the with the dark background all right so let's make this thing white again all right so that's it um like i mentioned over here on youtube a little bit more in-depth tutorials a little bit more in-depth uh techniques but i still hope that you're getting value out of these if you are do me a favor um like comment and share on this thing um do whatever you got to do uh subscribe i'm not too sure about all this stuff yet i'm still learning but uh, i want to thank you for watching this far and i hope you learned something new today also thank you to danny hendon for producing this music for me and uh yeah that's it i'll see you guys in the next one